it's a great and desperate adventure for all the players. It has elements of addiction, it has elements of sacrifice. You! You're not part of the King's Guard. The great thing about Hunted is that nobody is what they appear, and in fact, even our heroes don't know themselves until they're pushed over the edge of reason. I became fascinated with the Mayans and this concept of this race of people that were, that were so powerful and so organized as a culture that they were invading all of the outlying areas, rounding up all of the people, dragging them back to their temples and sacrificing to their gods. And so we took that concept and put it into a fantasy world. And you had your adventurers. If their goal was to try to stop that from happening, uh, it became very interesting. They are interfering with my slaves. Because the Mayans didn't see themselves as evil. They saw themselves as doing what was right to their own gods. When you think somebody's rotten to the core, and then all of a sudden you relate to them and you understand them. That's the beauty of Hunted. So the, the, the characters are being led at the beginning of the game by Seraphin to try to solve this mystery. Let's start with a favor. Seraphin is a spirit guide who sets our heroes off on their quest. She is asking for the help of Kadok and Allura to go on this mission, essentially for her, and, and um, save the, the humans from, from a terrible demise. The people are being taken. There's a strange liquid in the world. There's creatures addicted to it. And Seraphin's really encouraging the players to figure out what's going on and try to stop it from happening. My physical body is on the move and I fear many humans will be slaughtered. Time is not eternal. Seraphin is a, is a spirit guide, but she also has a physical presence, so she can appear and then vanish and they can hear her thoughts. I know what you seek. She has a love-hate relationship with Kadok and Allura. She loves Kadok. She hates Allura. There's no need for your snarky nature, Huntress. Kadok's kind of like, seems like she's got good ideas. So let's kind of follow along. And Allura's kind of like, I don't trust her, but I'm in for the action. Seraphim has convinced the characters to find these magic crystals throughout the world. And you use these crystals and give them to Seraphim, and she in turn bestows magic skills and magic abilities on the players. Now please, hand me the crystals. And she desperately needs you to achieve certain quests for her. And she, as a spirit guide, is relaying messages to you. You must get this done, otherwise I will die. I'm afraid the danger that lies ahead is graver than I had foreseen. When you do a video character, you uh, want to develop something that's going to make people feel, it's going to really bring the graphics alive. Grow accustomed to it in time. I want you to feel the danger. I want to put a chill down your spine when she's saying it's cold. It's cold. It's cold. You know, I want people to feel that it's cold. I want you to feel the terror. I want that quest to feel real to you. Oh, you must trust me. The sooner we put an end to this Anuvin, the better. The more you unravel the mystery, the more you get sort of a different angle on what you were being told to do and why. There's plenty of clues along the way and we very delicately place those throughout the world. They'll get to the end of a level and discover what they thought was true is not quite true, it's a little bit different. Kadok and Allura go through many terrible travails and, and they're terribly sorry at some point that they ever began this quest, but there's nothing for it now. The die's been cast. There, more prisoners. It's kind of like a movie. Once you get to the end and you look back at all the clues that you're given, you're going to go, oh, now this makes complete sense. That's what that was. The end is literally soul-destroying for somebody. I'm not going to say who. And the cycle will continue.